So Bling Dubai is a really, really interesting one, is if I'm being brutally honest, it started off as being one of the most blandest reality TV shows I've seen. However, by the end of it, it became easily one of the best ones, and now I just cannot wait for season two. What is up everybody? Welcome back to my channel, Lifestyle Critic. I hope you're having a brilliant day. So in this video, we are going to be reviewing Bling Dubai, which starts off as being another one of those reality TV shows that focuses on the lives of the super wealthy. But like I just said, it then just takes this unexpected and dramatic turn and easily has to be one of the most jaw-dropping moments yet. And I think it's an incredible love letter to Dubai as well, as it quite literally, I'm sure, makes everybody who hasn't been to Dubai yet just wanna immediately fly over there, as the life of these people just seems so luxurious, and on that point, I have to say, the people that they have selected for this show quite literally are so wealthy and so well off. They're easily one of the most wealthiest people from all of these reality TV shows. So let's go through the cast one by one. So first up, we have Zayna, who is the self-proclaimed queen of Dubai. And I have to say, she is probably the best character in there. She totally epitomizes class and is just one of those people that you don't want to mess with as she has no problem putting people in their place. And you can tell that she is incredibly intelligent, really, really successful as a businesswoman. And then of course, all of that Daniel drama, which we'll definitely talk about a lot more in a moment, but she actually had a drama with a lot of people, maybe not suffer, but pretty much all of the other people in this show. But to Zayna's credit, I don't think it's all her fault as I feel like people find her very, very intimidating and they're probably really jealous of her as well. So I feel like a lot of the insecurities come out, but because Zayna just doesn't sugarcoat anything and just doesn't take any rubbish from anybody, I feel like this escalates and just winds people up even more but I have to say Zayna is just so good in this series. Next up we have to talk about her best friend Safa and if I'm being honest I did find her a little bit difficult to watch in the beginning as she was just such a spoiled brat and just didn't appreciate her husband at all was just so materialistic and just really looks down at a lot of people and just throws money as if it just literally grows on trees. So I feel like she was difficult to watch in the beginning, but then as the series progresses, you do get to know her a little bit more and then you do really sympathize with her a little bit too. And she is so fiercely loyal to both her husband and to Zayna as well. I feel like they are such an intimidating double act. I did find her a little bit manipulative with her husband in terms of how she just maneuvers those situations to be super blameless and trying to go where she wants and making the other person seem really really bad so I feel like she has a really clever head on her shoulders which is a little bit dangerous but like I said by the end of this series you do see a very different side to her. Next up we have LJ who equally in the beginning was really really difficult to watch and she is the ultimate spoiled brat who really does look down at other people incredibly judgmental and very similarly to Zayna I guess she was having a lot of conflict with a lot of people but then even more so than Safa you're really growing to love this character by the end of the series especially after the distance that she has with her mother and the fact that her husband passed away and the fact that a lot of people then judge her because of this and saying that she only married her husband just for his money so you know all of this sort of stuff you do sympathize with the LJ character and then like I said by the end of it you are really rooting for her. Next up we have the other LJ Lojan who is the most followed person on social media out of the entire group as she is a really famous presenter and TV host and she seemed the most level-headed out of every single person in this group and I really liked how she really does want to help everybody as well. She fully removes herself from all of the drama and she was just really helping LJ kind of re-establish her relationship with her mother. But you can also see why LJ is getting a little bit jealous of this as obviously LJ wants to have a proper relationship with her mother but it seems as if Lojan has a stronger relationship with LJ's mother. Next up we have Farhana who is one of the most successful Dubai influencers and is one of the most successful people in Dubai as well and I just absolutely loved her how everybody just would give her such a hard time of constantly being sponsored by brands all the time with parties with gifts with her outfits all of that sort of stuff and she totally took it all on the chin if anything I wish we would have delved into this a little bit more and find out a lot more about how she gets these brand deals and how she turns them into something that is going to satisfy the brands I would have loved it if we have just dived into that a little bit more and it was really funny how it really wound Zayna up and you never really understood why Zayna was just getting so annoyed at the fact that Farhana is just surrounded by all of these sponsorship brand deals and it did kind of have a lot of conflict for Farhana not only with Zayna but also given the fact that she had a lot of 
history with LJ and the two of them kind of drifted apart. But then after that, I feel like Farhana then became a little bit boring and then she didn't really do anything for the rest of the series. Now we have to talk about one of the most shocking moments of this series, which is all to do with the Danya character. And Danya is really, really interesting. As that fan, she is easily one of the most nicest people on the group and is actually the one that you're most relating to as she just seems the most normal of all of the super wealthy people in this group. But then suddenly, that just takes an absolutely dramatic turn with the really uncomfortable sequence of events involving the Costa Coffee Cup where coffee was not only sprayed all over Zayna's office and it was just such uncomfortable viewing but then to see the fallout of this and it was just really, really interesting as clearly Daniel is harboring a lot of hatred, maybe fueled through jealousy, who knows the reason why. But I personally was on the side of Zayna. I mean, yes, Zayna and Safa did go to Ibrahim in his place of work but I feel like Ibrahim just triples everything back whenever he retaliates and went into her private office where Whereas Zayna and Safa went into a public space and they were just so intimidating, so rude. I feel like Zayna just took it like an absolute boss. But the sequence that transpired afterwards, like I said, was just so unbelievable. Now let's talk about some of the guys. So Daniel's husband, DJ Bliss, was just so cool. His Instagram bio calls himself a peacemaker. And he really was trying so hard to be really, really positive with everyone, to try to be the peacemaker. But he is truly in the middle of the most dramatic moment in reality TV history. So you do really feel for this guy. And he is trying so hard to be the peacemaker. But even during a big moment for his career, his launch on this yacht, all of the drama is understandably following him. But it was really, really cool on that reverse point to see all of the behind the scenes for this music track that was being released and the high flying life of him working with a lot of other famous people flying out to Miami and the jealousy that Daniel is also harboring with DJ Bliss in terms of a lot of people always dancing with him whenever he is a DJ. So I feel like Daniel just really does need to work through a lot of her issues. Then we have Chris Fade, who is also an incredibly successful radio host. And I have to say he is easily the nicest guy out of everybody in this entire group and is easily the person that I wanted it to be Daniel in terms of Chris Fade is the most relatable one of them all and I just absolutely loved it all of the sequences where his parents were getting really emotional at the fact that he is so successful and you can also really feel it for him and his partner the fact that he wants to put business over this wedding especially as business is going to be their source of income but the fact that his wife is just neglecting this but that being said when we do get the wedding sequence in the final episode it does kind of make you see why she was focusing on it so much as it really was a magical wedding moment. We also have Ibrahim who I have to say is probably the wealthiest person out of all of these guys in this group but the problem with Ibrahim is twofold one he is just the ultimate pot stirrer and will just drive drama so much and just get so wound up by things I mean the first scene where you do see a different side of him in terms of him and Farhana kind of pot making and him just smashing the pot as he just couldn't stand what Farhana was constantly saying about LJ the fact that he went 10 times harder on Zayna with going to her private office and just being so intimidating and rude in terms of saying that look I'm just going to buy your business and you're just going to work for me. So even though he is really, really successful, which I have to give him credit for, I do feel like it really does get to his head. And also he's not that humble about it or has that much humility as he does shove it down a lot of people's throats. So I absolutely love Dubai Bling. I think the final few episodes in particular are just so dramatic or just so unbelievably gripped and you just have to binge through it immediately as it's just such incredible viewing. And I just have to say, you know, the world of Dubai was absolutely incredible. The cars that they selected were really, really great. And like I said, easily some of the most wealthiest people that have ever done their behind the scenes lives on reality TV, as they are just chucking millions like it just is pennies. And I'm just really hopeful that we do get a season two. Apparently the Sheikh of Dubai doesn't really like this show as it doesn't depict Dubai in the way that he wants Dubai to be depicted. But I just hope that we do get a season two as we just need to see what's going to happen next with all of these characters. And I hope they introduce a slightly younger crowd as apparently they are even more outrageous and even crazier in Dubai. So I would love to see kind of a younger people's look into Dubai and just a bit more about the influencer lens of what it's like to be in Dubai as well. But I have to say all in all, Dubai Bling was so, so good and I have to give it a solid seven out of 10. Now I'd love to hear what you thought of Dubai Bling, so please let us all know in the comment section below. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you in my next video.